New York City, where I live, is just the most hostile. I dropped my mobile phone on the street the other day. Dropped it on the street, and it smashed into pieces, and all I heard was laughter. Swear to God, <laughs> laughter. I heard this guy laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Sucks when that happens, dude. Ha, ha, ha. Sucks when that happens. I looked at him, I swear to you, he had one arm. One arm. A one arm. Only an American is a one arm bastard. Mock a perfectly decent two arm person just because I have a broken phone. He's like, ha, ha, ha. Sucks when that happens. I looked at him, I was like, sucks when that happens. That must have been a pretty shitty day, too. Guess what? I'm gonna get a new phone. You know what I mean? You just can't take that kind of thing from the, from the one arm. I mean, I'm not limist, you know, but I, so I, you know what, that's a true story. And I told that story in a club and this woman came up to me after, she goes, you're an asshole. You are an absolute asshole. And she also had one arm, swear to you. <laughs> I said, you know what, I'm sorry. I didn't, it wasn't about, it was, this was a true story. That really happened, and that guy was a dick, right? And I didn't think you people would kind of cluster together as an interest group anyway. I thought, she goes, you're a fucking asshole. You're an asshole. You shouldn't be allowed to say shit like that. And I said, well, you know what? I'm sorry that you're offended. It wasn't about you, but there is still a little bit of freedom of speech left in the world, thank God. But I'm sorry if you were upset. It really wasn't about you. She goes, you know what, fuck you. You're a fucking asshole. You should never be allowed to say that stuff. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I thought, really, this was the worst thing? <laughs> I tell you one true story, that beat, that drunken day at the sawmill or whatever the hell happened to you. <laughs> it's about finding your soulmate is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> finding a love, a soulmate, that's what they tell you to do, right? Find a soulmate. I didn't used to believe in soulmates at all until I saw Siegfried and Roy. Is there, you got a gay lion tamer who hooked up with another gay lion tamer. What are the odds of that happening? Talk about holding out for Mr. Right. That's a pretty beautiful story. Every couple fights. It's impossible not to fight. We all fight. Guarantee you guys have fought. You know exactly the fights I'm talking about, too. You know the one where you're bombing in an empty club in Wheeling, West Virginia, and some toothless mullet head in the front row is like, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? And you're like, did you really just say that, you cliche, slobbering, mongoloid, half-wit, people still say inbred, cracker-ass shit like that? <laughs> and like, you suck, you ain't funny at all. And you're like, hey, don't be mad at me because you caught your rat tail in the tilt of world at work today, fuckface, okay? I didn't, I didn't tell you to drop out of high school and eat rock candy 15 hours a day for the last 18 years. And, He's like, man, I'm gonna kick your ass. Go, why don't you kick my ass, that motherfucker, right? So you get off stage, you start doing shots of tequila just to numb the pain. And you know, on the phone with your wife, she's like, are you drunk? You're like, yeah, I'm drunk. I'm in West Virginia. I'm gonna stay drunk the whole goddamn time I'm here. Well, I hate you gotta go on the road to get drunk all the time. Well, I hate going on the road too, my love, but I'm just trying to earn a living here. And I'm getting drunk because the only way I can anesthetize myself enough to entertain a bunch of freaks that I have nothing in common with. No offense. I would have thought. <laughs> I would have thought you as the woman who supposedly loves me for me and for who I am would show me one fucking shred of compassion. Well, I never would have married you if I knew you were gonna go on the road and work in nightclubs and work in clubs. I wouldn't have married someone like that. Uh, yeah, you would have, because that's how we met in the first place, remember? And remember, remember I said I wasn't gonna change my lifestyle, which is why I said we shouldn't get married, but of course you pressured me to get married anyway, because you women are fucking psychotic lunatics that can't leave well enough alone. It's always like, where are we going with this? Where's this headed? What direction are we moving in? And then once you get your hooks in someone, you take what you originally found attractive out and you mash it the fuck right out of them. <laughs> The point is you have to find love. That's really, that was the whole point of that whole diatribe. A lot of people go online now, computer, right? Computer dating. That used to be for losers. Now everybody I know goes online, they meet all these women every week. It's just my luck, I get married and they come out with this great new way to get laid. I feel like a guy who got polio a week before the vaccine came out. <laughs> Everything's done on the computer now. They say internet porn is ruining a lot of marriages. It hasn't ruined my marriage, but it's totally destroyed my keyboard. <laughs> the point is you should be able to find your soulmate wherever you find them, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gay marriage, who cares if two gay people, if gay people want to get married, why not, right? Who gives a shit? How could anyone care? Yeah, if you want to, knock yourself out. A lot of people say gay marriage would ruin the sanctity. It violates the sanctity of marriage. The sanctity of marriage. Is anybody here married? Yeah? yeah? Does it feel like a gift from God to you? <laughs> sanctity? 
Not only, do, not only do I think gay people should be allowed to get married, I think they should have to get married because I'm a little tired of their happy-go-lucky lifestyles. <laughs> they should have to suffer just like everybody else. I'm tired of walking by these sidewalk cafes. These guys are sitting there all tan and fit and muscular, planning trips. They're always in good moods. Some of them are in their, some of them are in their 60s. They still look great because they don't have someone at home sucking the will to live right out of them. <laughs> And if you had to be married, being married to a guy would be great. <laughs> Could you imagine saying something and having the words you said interpreted exactly the way that you intended your words to be interpreted? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a nice change of pace? Remember what you said 10 years ago? We were driving in the car on the way to my mother's house? No. Oh, me neither, I'm a dude. Fuck it, never mind. <laughs> I was about to make up some giant horse shit about something that never happened, and then I realized we're both guys, we could shut up and drive along in peace, you know? <laughs> Being married to a guy would be great. Other than the taking in the ass part. That would suck. That would suck. But it's a trade-off I might be willing to make. I can't tell you how many times I've thought to myself, I would take a giant cock in the ass if you would just shut the fuck up for one second. 